Okay, uh, welcome to this session on commodity derivatives and risk management and we will be uh, continuing with our discussion on carbon uh, derivatives. And if you recall in the last session we were discussing about Kyoto Protocol, we also discussed uh, about United Nations Framework Convention on Climate uh, Change that is UNFCCC and uh, how uh, based on the UNFCCC guidelines or uh, regulations companies can earn uh, three different types of uh, carbon credits that is your uh, AAU that is assigned uh, uh, amount units um, as per the cap and trade program and CERs that is your certified emission reduction pr uh, units as per the clean development mechanism and ERUs emission reduction units as per the joint implementation program. So, uh, if you can see uh, this is the uh, three different types of carbon credits which a particular company can own uh, or trade that is um, AAU assigned amount units which comes from the cap and trade program certified emission reduction units which come from the clean de development mechanism and emission reduction units which come from the joint implementation mechanism. Now, subsequent to Kyoto Protocol, uh, subsequent to uh, the uh, you know Kyoto Protocol, this uh, UNFCCC met at uh, Doha on uh, Doha quarter, uh, Carter on eighth uh, December 2012, and a new amendment was adopted. And what was the new amendment? The new amendment uh, intended to reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emission by 18 percent below the 1990 label in the uh, during eight years period starting from 2013 to 2020. If you recall the phase 2 of the Kyoto Protocol which uh, are uh, intended to reduce the total greenhouse gas emission by 5 percent during uh, an, uh, during uh, 2005 to uh, do during 2008 to 2012. Um, so, this particular Doha round is an extension of that agreement in which all member countries want uh, you know together jointly they will reduce the greenhouse gas emission by 18 percent below 1990 and this will be achieved over a 8 year period from 2013 to 2020. Otherwise most of the uh, you know uh, other uh, parts of the uh, uh, Doha agreement uh, would be uh, are same as far as this particular commodity derivative uh, sub, you know commodity derivative discussion is uh, concerned, though there are some other policy uh, changes and all, but that we are not going to focus on this discussion. Now, um, subsequent to uh, the uh, you know the Kyoto Protocol Agreement, uh, United uh, European Union Climate Change Program started a European Union emission trading system. Let me repeat, to bolster the activity or to promote the activities of Kyoto Protocol, European member nations uh, created or started a uh, trading system which was known as European Union, Union Emission Trading System or EU ETS. And this EU ETS started in the year 2005 and with the very clear cut objective of facilitate trading, uh, trading of carbon credits among the industrial operators and countries within the European Union. So, what uh, which kind of a carbon credits could be traded at this EU ETS? It is uh, these uh, carbon credits are known as EU uh, European Union allowances or EUAs which are equivalent to AAUs, there is nothing, uh, there is no difference between AAUs or EUAs, they are the same. So, uh, this e, uh, EUAs were traded at um, EU ETS besides uh, this European Union allowances 
certified emission reduction uh, and uh, uh, emission reduction unit were also traded at UETS. Now, uh, this particular uh, you know this w, uh, http www.eex.com this uh, website um, will take you to the eu ets uh, you know trading system so if, uh, you know you can go into uh, this particular website and see what are the different kinds of contracts and what uh, trading happens also another exchange uh, which is known as your uh, the ice.com uh, this uh, particular exchange lists, uh, you know, list uh, the futures and options contract on different types of carbon derivatives. So these two exchanges are world uh, famous for offering uh, derivative contracts on uh, carbon credits. Now let's go to little bit uh, more on understanding of EU ETS program, uh, EU ETS trading system. Now, uh, Union, uh, European Union uh, allowance uh, were not freely given like AAUs, if you recall. Uh, AAUs were distributed to industrial operators by a member nation. Let us say a member nation is entitled to emit X units of uh, AAUs and uh, this AAUs, this X unit is distributed to the industrial operators uh, uh, based on certain uh, you know guideline and uh, this industrial operators are free to emit uh, whatever uh, has been allocated to them. If they emit more than that, they have to go to the exchange to buy carbon credits to the to the extent of uh, extra uh, you know emission they have uh, generated now this e uh, european union trading uh, uh, you know system uh, as part of the eu uh, ets what they decided is that this all uh, eu as are not to be given free or this assigned units will not be given free and uh, a part of the uh, assigned units will be given free and a part has to be auctioned uh, as part of the EU ETS system. So, a au the auction will happen in the EU ETS system. So, now let us take uh, a uh, you know example to understand what is this auction and how this auction happens. Let us say, so this particular um, let us say this, let us first understand the spot trading of the carbon credits. Suppose a country is free to emit 25 uh, units of carbon uh, you know dioxide equivalent. So, as per the, as per the uh, UNFCC convention, UNFCC convention a country is free to emit 25 million units of carbon dioxide. So, when we are talking about country, it is nothing called a country, the industrial operators or companies operating uh, in that countries are free to uh, emit this 25 uh, million units. Now, let us say this 25 million units has to be distributed freely among the four industrial operators. Now, A will get 9 million, B will get 6 million. C gets 3 million and D gets 7 million. Now, how this A, B, C, D, uh, you know, how this different uh, amounts will be distributed? This will be distributed based on the past uh, operating history of a of these uh, four industrial operator. Let us say uh, A is uh, A is a you know thermal power plant and traditionally thermal power plants have emitted more uh, car, uh, greenhouse gases. So, the nature of operation is that they are uh, going to emit uh, more greenhouse gases. So, more uh, you know this uh, the more this of more of AAUs are more of a user assigned to or allocated to this uh, you know industrial operator a so depending upon the nature of operation a country decides to allocate 9 6 and 3 7 million respectively among a b c d 
Now, what is the actual uh, carbon dioxide emitted like by the end of the year? Let us see an A emitted 12 million, B emitted 2 million and C emitted 4 million and D emitted 4 million units. Now, what is going to be the surplus? The surplus is going to be so, uh, the surplus is negative um, 3 million that means, the this company or this operator was supposed to emit only up to uh, 9 million, but it has gone up to more than that. So, 12 million. So, it has a deficit of 3 million. Similarly, party B or, or uh, industrial operator B has 4 million surplus, surplus. Uh, C has 1 million deficit and D has 3 million, uh, 3 million uh, surplus. Now, what will happen? B and D are going to be the sellers of the carbon dioxide uh, or carbon credits. They are going to be the seller of carbon credits and A and C are going to be buyers of the carbon credit. They are the they are the deficit uh, you know they are the deficit industrial operators. So, they have to go to a commodity exchange and they can buy this units 3 million and 1 million 4 uh, million unit uh, 4 million units and these parties these two B and C will be the sellers and A and uh, B and D are going to be the seller and A R C are going to be the buyers and they will go to the exchange platform and buy and sell the commodity uh, carbon uh, credits. This is uh, is a example of when the carbon credits is given absolutely freely and depending upon the actual emission this ex these industrial operators will go to the exchange platform and buy the deficit uh, buy uh, you know this carbon credit if they have generated more uh, greenhouse gas emission or and uh, those who are uh, emitted less greenhouse gas uh, gas they will be uh, selling these assigned units now let's go to the un to understand how EU ETS undertakes a uh, you know auction. So what exactly is the auction of carbon credit? Let's say this uh, country decides not to distribute the complete 25 million uh, carbon uh, credits uh, free of cost. It only distributes. It is willing to distribute only 80 new 80 units as. 80 percent of uh, 25 million free of cost and rest 20 percent that is 5 million will be auctioned off. So, how exactly this will happen let us understand. So, as part of the uh, free distribution A will get let us say 8, B will get 4, C will get 2 and D will get 6 million. Some total of it is 20 million. Now, the remaining 5 million will be auctioned off in uh, the exchange platform. So, uh, I am sure all of you must be knowing how companies auction their shares. When a company comes out with a IPO initial public offer, they solicit bid from different buyers and uh, depending upon whoever is the uh, whichever buyer or who uh, the buyer who, uh, who has given a highest bid those buyers are allocated shares exactly the same procedure is undertaken at eu uh, ets so this 5 million uh, uh, you know a use or e uh, use will be uh, available for buying and these four industrial operators will be bidding uh, for uh, you know this 5 million uh, carbon credits. So, depending upon whichever party has uh, you know bidded the highest amount accordingly allocation will be done. Now, let us go to let us say as part of the auction process B got allocation of 2 uh, units, C got allocation of 2 units uh, 2 million units. 2 million unit, 2 million unit and D got a allocation of 1 million uh, unit and A did not get any allocation because A probably had uh, you know uh, quoted a very low price. So, it did not get a allocation. So, going by that what is the uh, total uh, uh, allocated unit? Allocated unit is 8 unit for A and for B 4 unit freely given 4 million units for all freely given 2 mini, uh, million units was procured or bought by the company so and so forth 
and what is the actual emission? Total emission is going to be 10 and uh, 7, 3 and 12. So, going by that, what is going to be the surplus or deficit? It is going to be minus 2, uh, that is a deficit. The company has owns or permitted to emit 8 million, but actually it has emitted 10 million. So, it has a deficit of 2 million. Similarly, party B or industrial operator B is minus 1, industrial operator um, C is plus 1 and D is minus 5. So, obviously, C is going to be the seller of the carbon uh, credits 1 million unit and A, B, D are going to be buyer of the carbon credit. And if this kind of a situation happens, when you have more amount to be bought, uh, more than the amount to be sold, it will give rise to, uh, you know, the spot price uh, of these carbon credits are going to increase. Now, let us focus on, uh, this is the, you know, I have taken a, a EEX website, how auction is done. A announcement by the EEX website says that in today's primary market option auction, which was held on 24th June 2016, 11 a.m. on behalf of the Germany government, 3.495 million of uh, European uh, 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 allowances was auctioned off on the EEX spot market at a price of 4.96 euro per. Uh, unit of EUA. So, uh, this 3.495 million, uh, 3.495 million EUA, EUAs were auctioned off and uh, people who bidded for it on an average, uh, you know, they may have bidded at different price, but uh, they have paid to buy, uh, uh, they have paid 4.96 euro to buy one unit of uh, European Union allowance. Now, let us quickly discuss uh, about, uh, discuss little bit about US, uh, USA and Kyoto Protocol and Greenhouse Gas uh, Emission Reduction Initiative. Uh, this particular table shows what has been the um, uh, greenhouse gas emission in terms of, uh, you know, units uh, during 1970 and 2012. This data I have calculated from worldbank.org. In fact, this uh, uh, detail yesterday, uh, this detail I have, uh, you know, discussed in the previous class. So, you have, if you uh, see this one, if you see uh, Brazil emitted 1.26 million in 1970 and it has gone up to 2.989 million in 2012. And China is a remarkable, you know, you know, remarkable growth in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emission on almost, uh, you know, 11 times it has gone up. India also has gone up significantly and if you see USA from 5.4 million to it has come down to 4.64 million uh, during uh, 1970 to 2012. However, one interesting aspect is that USA is not part of a uh, Kyoto, uh, you know, protocol signatory. I USA did not sign the uh, Kyoto, uh, you know, Kyoto protocol. However, many support groups and citizen uh, advocacy groups and academic uh, institutes uh, have undertaken many initiatives which has resulted in, um, you know, many programs being undertaken in USA for reducing greenhouse gas emission. So, some of the, you know, interesting or some of the important, uh, uh, you know, initiatives I have listed. So, which are these? U.S. Conference Mayors Climate Protection Agreement, Regional Gra uh, Greenhouse Gas Initiative, uh, and this is Western Climate Initiatives, U.S. Environment Protection Agency, Acid Rain Program, and California Climate Action Registry. There are many more initiatives. This is just a sample examples of what are the different initiatives taken by different uh, organization, different bodies in USA to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And at this juncture, I am just going to discuss little bit on this, uh, you know, acid rain program. US Environment Protection Agency, US EPA started a acid rain program. So, what exactly this acid rain program? It requires coal based electricity utilities to reduce their sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide uh, emission. 
So, it is basically a cap and trade uh, program. So, all these uh, you know coal based electricity uh, utilities will be uh, are permitted to uh, you know emit some uh, level of uh, sulfur oxide and nitrous oxide and beyond that if they uh, you know if they emit uh, this uh, sulfur oxide and nitrous oxide beyond that re, uh, amount they have to go to the exchange platform and buy uh, this uh, the excess em uh, emission it's a like a is exactly like a cap and trade program and uh, why this only coal based utility electric utility has been uh, you know has been identified in fact uh, if you uh, if you uh, know that uh, one third of the greenhouse gas emission comes from coal uh, fired uh, electricity generation so this is a major contributor towards the greenhouse gas uh, emission all over the world now with this we will discuss little bit on spot future price relationship between carbon credits and if you recall any derivative uh, can be uh, you know any derivative can be modeled uh, using your cost of carry model and uh, uh, in this as you can see in this formula mentioned st is the is your spot price of the you know the underlying so in this case it is going to be the carbon credit r is your cost of uh, capital delta or y uh, in the previous session sometime in the previous session we have discussed it is nothing but a convenience yield and t is your time to maturity and if delta is more than r then the commodity is in short supply and the market exhibits backwardation so without any supply restriction or if the underlying commodity is available in abundant uh, manner then the market will exhibit a contango that means futures price is going to be more than the spot price and far month future price is going to be more than the near month uh, uh, near month futures price and when we uh, price the uh, you know carbon futures contract uh, we do not have to adjust or accommodate the storage cost because there is no cost associated with storing carbon credits so uh, the a formula uh, for calculation of uh, the um, of the uh, uh, carbon uh, derivative is uh, this there is uh, you know no uh, no uh, storage cost and there is also delta is also zero because uh, carbon credits uh, uh, carbon credit there are abundant number amount of carbon credit available for trading in fact supply is more than the demand so futures market is always uh, contango in nature when the you know carbon um, credits are un are uh, um, you know are, are the underlying now let's quickly uh, let's quickly take you through the spot and futures contract specification for uh, this carbon credits okay please focus on this particular if you see this is the contract specification for european union uh, allowances uh, futures product and what is the underlying that is eu allowances and uh, which is uh, permitted uh, i mean which is equivalent to uh, you know emit one ton of carbon dioxide equivalent and what is the delivery method please see this one or delivery period you can have monthly futures you can have quarterly futures and you can have yearly futures and as of today somebody can enter into futures contract for a contract going up to 2020 december 2020 what is the minimum lot size that is 1000 units of europe european uni union allowance and um, uh, 
uh, how the uh, you know how the uh, transfer can happen the transfer will happen through a escrow account so i am not going into this detail it's mostly like you know the way uh, the transaction happens currently for your share uh, buying and selling so from your demat account share gets transferred if you are selling shares gets transferred to the buyer's demat account exactly exactly similar procedure will be followed now uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, the spot and futures price let's quickly discuss what is going to be the or what are the factors which influence the uh, spot and futures price and let's first discuss what are the you know factors which influence your spot price in fact uh, one of the very important uh, you know determinant of the spot price is the amount of allowance unit available for sale if a higher uh, limit is given to us, uh, given to an industrial operator, and uh, that means that industrial operator will have a more amount of uh, allowance units available for sale. So the supply will be higher. And now let's go to the second, uh, you know, second uh, factor which will be influencing influencing the supply. That is new projects under CDM and JI mechanism, joint implementation mechanism. So if more number of new projects are coming, so you will have more amount, more number of CERs and ERUs available for trading. And uh, very interestingly, the price of natural gas and coal also is a significant uh, contributor of uh, you know carbon credit price. We'll come to that discussion a little later. Also, another thing, demand from World ba Bank is a uh, is also another major uh, you know contributor of the of the um, uh, carbon price. So. Uh, uh, World Bank uh, has a unit called Carbon Finance Unit, which is a major pro, you know, purchaser of CERs and ERUs. So, um, this Carbon Finance Unit uh, buys CERs and ERUs, and by buying these CERs and ERUs, the demand uh, increases and thus it influences the spot price. And if, if you can, uh, if, uh, if you can see this as mentioned in this particular, uh, you know. Uh, PPT. Uh, from 2000 onwards, World Bank has bought around 187 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So the uh, demand from World Bank uh, is a uh, is influences the spot price considerably. Now let's focus on how the price of uh, natural gas and coal influences the carbon uh, spot price. Uh, we know that uh, you know um, companies can either use coal or it can use natural gas to generate electricity so when uh, you know electricity um, or higher gas uh, based uh, electricity generation leads to lower uh, gsg emission and more availabilities of allowance units and less price for uh, carbon so whenever companies start using gas uh, for generating electricity, natural gas for generating electricity, they uh, emit less greenhouse gas emission. So, when they emit less greenhouse gas emission, their uh, you know available uh, of assigned unit becomes more, and uh, this influences supply uh, of carbon credit in increases, and this influences the spot price. In fact, uh, some researchers have under, uh, undertaken a study when the gas price goes down and electricity generators use start using gas, then uh, the carbon uh, credit price drops. And as you can see, this report uh, in indicates that a fall in gas price from six dollar to two dollar uh, reduces the uh, carbon dioxide emission uh, prices by ten percent. Now. Uh, in uh, with respect to this, uh, you know, price comparison between coal and natural uh, gas, you have we have two concepts called dark spread and spark spread. So, what exactly is a dark spread? Price of electricity minus the price of coal into the hit rate of the coal. And what is a uh, 
spark spread spark spread is price of electricity minus price of gas into heat rate of gas from these two spread when we are subtracting the price of carbon dioxide and emission intensity of a particular plant what we get is a clean dark spread and clean spark spread so when clean spark spread is greater than the clean dark spread then companies will be using uh, gas to generate uh, generate uh, electricity let me repeat when the clean spark spread is more than the clean dark spread companies will be using uh, natural gas to generate electricity in fact when we equate these two equations clean dark spread equation and clean dark spread uh, clean spark dark spread and spark sp spread equation what we get is something called a implied switching cost of uh, carbon uh, implied switching cost so what exactly is implied switching uh, cost or price is the cost associated with switching from coal to gas see coal is a cheaper uh, a source of generating electricity so naturally companies will be tend uh, interested to use coal to generate electricity and when they generate coal they when they use coal they emit more ghg and they have to buy carbon credit so if carbon credit price is more then they will be uh, you know discouraged to uh, use coal because if they use coal they have to end up uh, they may be saving on gas uh, you know they may be saving on cheaper uh, coal but they may end up paying a higher cost for buying uh, carbon credits so if carbon price traded in the market is higher than the implied switching price then it will be beneficial for the power producer to switch to gas so many power producer calculate this implied switching price and accordingly take a decision now with this we will end up our discussion so uh, uh, just a you know key questions um, uh, that is what is the different uh, what are the different types of carbon credits and how these carbon credits are generated and what is the difference between auction of carbon credit and spot trading and what factors influence the spot and futures price of carbon credits and uh, how clean dark and spark spread is uh, calculated and how price of carbon credit influences the choice for coal versus natural gas with this uh, we will be uh, winding up our discussion on carbon credits and uh, as usual uh, i am ending this session and looking forward to interacting with you in the next session thanking all of you